Hey everybody, Function X here, broadcasting from day one of lockdown in Utah. <laughs> We've been quarantined for a while, but today is the first day where they've said, stay home, don't leave your house. A uh, good thing is, we've got a new game to play, and that is Charterstone Digital Edition. I've played the board game all the way through the campaign, just finished last week, um, and just happened to have the digital edition launched in a perfect timing here. So we're going to give it a try, uh, play through it. Uh, we're going to play just single player, um, at least one human player against a bunch of AI. Uh, and we'll do a full six player game here. So let's start the campaign. Uh, if you've never played Charter Stain, uh, it's a worker placement, but it's also a legacy game. So you play over 12 games and the board changes and you unlock stuff. It's a really cool game. Uh, so yeah, we have the fun little trial games here that I've I've been doing. Let's do uh, this empty game slot here. And uh, what are we going to call it? It's tough. I wish I was streaming this. Maybe I should stream this because then you guys could uh, tell me what you want me to call it instead. But oh well, we'll just pick something. Um, let's just call it Boomtown. Uh, yeah. And uh, which do we want to pick? We've got six different guys to pick. Purple does some pumpkins, black does some coal, green is forest, red's brick, blue is uh, uh, iron, and yellow is wheat. Um, I've never played the iron character for before, so let's go ahead and take her. Uh, what do we want to call her? She looks like a Grandma Jean. Let's call her Grandma Jean. And uh, we've got uh, five other AI players playing the other charters. We could name them. We've got Maritza, Kevin, Christil, uh, Bruce, and Sebastian. Sounds great. We'll just go with those. And uh, it's going to start us off. Um, the very first game, it's there's not a lot of worker, you know, placement spots. You know, it's a very much a board game. If you're coming here for a you know an exciting video game, yeah, you're going to be a little disappointed. <laughs> it's it's just a digital version of a board game. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, the, we, I just skipped through all the lore, I'm sorry. There's the Forever King. Uh, he has hired six of us to come and build him this new uh, villages. So he's given each of us a plot of land called a charter. And he wants us to build it up, gather resources, and make him rich. So that's our, our, our thing to do. Over here in the blue charter, um, the first thing it wants me to do is place a um, kind of the general resource generating building, which gives me a free or a resource whenever I put a guy there. So let's just put it close to the middle so everybody can see it. And then I can name my charter. So if I had a Boomtown village and it uh, had a place that was producing iron, maybe I'll just call it the gold mine. That, that makes sense, right? A gold mine produces iron? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I don't need to know about the other other um, buildings. Uh, and here's the Charter Stone, which is just basically a six-sided die with each color on it. And we're going to roll to see who goes first. And red gets to go first, which means we get to go last. That's kind of a good and a bad thing. Uh, the good thing is that if we trigger the end game, nobody else gets to go. We just, like, end the game. Um, which, yeah, is, is pretty pretty nice to have that control. Um, there's a lot on the board for first play, first time through. So let me just go ahead and explain to you. In the middle is the common area. It's got five building or five worker placement spots. Uh, the first is a zeppelin. That's how we build new buildings in our charter. Um, the charter stone itself um, is how we unlock crates, which gives you new cards, new abilities, whatever. Uh, the grandstand, which is um, I claim to. Uh, achieved a, an objective and you get victory points for it so that's kind of where your victory point spot is um this one is trade any resource for gold and this one is trade a resource and a gold for a card um so that's the general five areas now if we look up here we've got uh, our personas which we don't have any of the first game it's kind of like what your uh, grandma jean is you know she'd be a baker she'd be a miner whatever she is um Here's the cards in our hand. All we have to start with is a crate. You'll see each charter has a crate, numbered one through six. Uh, so that's one of our goals this first game is to unlock this crate, which we do at the Charter Stone for four gold and two influence. That's what that little token means. When we do that, we're gonna get five victory points. The progress tracker is gonna evolve, or it evolve, not evolve. It's gonna move forward, there we go. And at, after 25 times moving forward, the game will end and we unlock the crate and get its contents. Um, we have our objectives. This first round, they want uh, three um, uh, quota track movements, whatever, I'll show you the quota track in a moment. Uh, three reputation claimed, and also having six coins. I start the game with four, so if I could just get two more before I go and spend them, I could claim this real quick and get uh, four victory points, or no, five victory points here, yeah. 
Um, so that's pretty cool. The quota track is basically you trade whatever you don't want for resources. So I could trade one, two, or three. Usually you want to trade the lowest, the leftmost one, because it's cheapest. One, one resource for three points, two resources for four points, or three resources for three points and a reputa uh, yeah, reputation uh, marker. Um, you can do the same thing with gold, and you can do the same thing with your cards. Uh, over here, we've got our card deck. Right now, there's only one type of card that we can grab, and these are these um, assistants that we can grab, and they kind of give us victory points or other things based on what we do. So I can use the Charter Stone, two extra victory points. Use the Zeppelin, two extra victory points. Use the Market, get a reputation. Advance the track, get a Yeah, so there's different things you can go there. Uh, we definitely probably want to get some cards here. Um... And then we've got the progress track. You can see most of them are the same. Some of them, if you're the one to advance the track, you're gonna get a free reputation bonus, which is cool. And when we get to the end, then we'll have the end of the game. Uh, and then this is the reputation track. We all start with zero, but as you bump up, um, the per person that has the most gets 10, then seven for second, four for third, and it's friendly with ties. There's only 17 total spots you can claim. So the more we claim, the less they can claim. Uh, but we do lose influence to do it. We have influence is one of our limited resources. We ha all have 12 to start with. So you can see it costs three to build a building, two to build a charter stone, one to claim an objective, uh, one to go and go on the quota track, um, one to go on the reputation track. So you gotta, that's one of the things you gotta manage this game is where am I gonna spend those 12 reputation because they're not easy to get back. Um, and so, yeah, everybody you can see has just kind of gone to their general building to get their first resource. Now, one of the cool things about Charterstone, if you um, put your guy, I have two meeples, right, two workers. If I put my worker where there is already a worker, it bumps them. So they go back to their, their player's, like, ready area. So if I put it here, um, it's doubtful that anyone is going to want to come claim iron and bump me. However... If I go and bump, let's say, the brick guy, he goes back to start, and let's see, I'm guessing he's gonna bump us back, just the way the AR works. Let's see, nope, he didn't, he went up there. <laughs> oh god, he wanted some three early victory points, and Green decided just to open the crate right off the bat. Wow, they're just gonna spend their four coins, and let's see what they got. It's, it's kinda interesting, the crates are fun to open, you never know really what they're gonna come. If you play the campaign a lot, you can kinda get a clue of what you know, normally comes out, especially the the beginning crates because they're always the same. Um, but the green charter now has access to the lumber mill, whereas before they could only get one wood for a worker. Now, if they add an additional influence, they can get two wood, so it's a little better. Oops. Uh, they could also build this card, which gives uh, they pay a wood to get a coin and a reputation. That's pretty nice. And then they get a persona. That just is like the rule. Everybody gets that rule. And here's their persona. After using a building with a wood cost, gain a VP. So the wood, he can just say, I'm a carpenter this game. You can only do that at the beginning of the game, in most cases. Um, so that'll, that'll be available for game two. All right, so black is also going to unlock their chart, their uh, their crate here. Uh, they show very similar buildings. The first one gives them, uh, instead of two of their resource, they get coin in their resource for an influence. And then they pay coal to get two coins. So black is all about getting coins. We're very similar. We'll also have almost very identical buildings. Um, and theirs is a miner, so very similar just with coal. Okay, so back to us. Now we didn't get bumps, so we only have one worker left. And if we placed it out there and we came back around to our turn and we had no workers, we'd have to retrieve, waste a whole turn just bringing our guys back. That sucks. Um, so I would like to instead, how about bumping myself? Now what I'm going to do with this is I would like to get enough resources that I can go over here and trade them for gold. Once I get six gold, I'll claim the objective and then open my crate. I think that's a better, a better plan than just opening a crate right off the bat. So now we have two bricks. That's enough to get our, our two gold that we need for that objective. And they're all bumping each other in the, in the charter stone, so... I guess by the time I get there, they won't be able to, <laughs> no one to bump me. Uh, so Greenhouse, they're getting uh, their pumpkin, which is their resource, plus victory points. That's that icon. Or they can trade a pumpkin for a coin and a victory point. And they have the same kind of persona. Alrighty. What's Green doing? Green's bumped himself. Maybe we should have gone to Green. 
Somebody bump us. I want my guy back. All right, and they open theirs. You can tell who's opened their crate by who has coins. Grandma Jean still has four, and Sebastian still has four. So red and blue, red and us, have not opened their crate. Um, his, an influence gets him. It's almost identical to the, uh, the brick. Uh, no, he's similar to, oh, to the wood. Yeah, wood and wheat are very similar buildings. And get the farmer persona. Black bumped himself. All right, still nobody's bumped us. I'm guessing Sebastian will bump us. He might go to the charter stone. So we're kind of risking it here of losing a guy. Um, I would like to have both guys here so I can go this twice. So do I just go ahead and get another brick? and hope that he bumps us this time. Let's try it. Bump us, bump us. Yes! <laughs> uh, the AI can get a little bit predictable. They are very, uh, they like to build, they like to go to their own charter, especially in the first game. They don't value any more one resource over another, so might as well go to your own, right? Okay, so now we've got both workers. We'll go ahead and send this guy in to get a coin, and we'll pay a brick for that. The UI on this is just brilliant it's it, very slick once you do, learn the icons it's just nice and smooth Every all the animations are great they did a really good job in this game um the board game itself is beautiful if you've never played charters on the board game it's i don't know it's like 40 bucks and it gives you 12 games if you got a group of you know three to six people you want to play with you can play solo like this they have like an auto automata rules where it will like control the ai very similar to how this game does um all right, so we'll go there and pay another brick. Now we've got our six coins. Would be nice if someone bumped us right here. Oh, Red's getting his box, so. Can't count on anyone to bump us there. Brick market. So he's very similar to the pumpkin where he gets victory points. Um, but he has one where he gets two bricks, which is almost like the wood guy. So, yeah, the mason persona. They like doing this thing. <laughs> it gives them lots of victory points. You can see they're, we're, we're at zero and they're all at eight and nine. Don't worry, we'll catch up. We've got 10 points sitting in the bag right now. Be nice if we got bumped, someone want a coin. I don't think they're gonna bump us. So we'll go in here and go ahead and uh, claim our objective. So we're gonna say, I have six coins. I will score that and just got five victory points. We did lose one of our, um, uh, influence though we only have 11 available now and one of the things that happened is we tr we triggered this the boat whatever icon and so it says do you want to increase your reputation i do so that cost another influence so that move cost us two influence out of our 12 but it was pretty valuable we got five points there and we're tied for first on the rep track Surprised no one's built their building yet, I guess. I think they're just building resources and then gonna trading men for points. <laughs> That's all they seem to be doing right now. It's fine. All right, so here's our first retrieve. Nobody bumped either of our two spots, so we're pulling back. It's kind of kind of sucks. You want to avoid it if possible, but you, you can't do it every time. Okay, so our next thing. Uh, it would be nice... Um, we don't really want to bump red, right? And he's still got a guy to place, but um, getting a card would be cool. We've got the six coins. We've got a free brick, so I think I'm going to go grab a card while there's still some, because these start to go fast. There's a very limited. There's only eight cards to start with the beginning of the game. Um, we plan to go to the Charter Stone right now, um, so might as well get two extra victory points for it, right? And then we say, okay, got it. So we got our card. And still, rather than five, we'll get seven victory points. Cool. And red pulled back, actually. I don't know why he pulled back, because I thought he had one worker still, but that's nice. We can go here without bumping him. And if they're not going to help me, I'm going to help them. All right, so let's pick our crate. Here we go, crate five. What does it have in it? Uh, we have... Do, 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 do. All right, our first building is the refinery. For an influence, we get a victory point and a metal. Pretty cool. Uh, and then the iron market. For an iron, we get two coins. Or for metal, we get two coins. 
Both of them are with three points at the end of the campaign. So after 12 games, um, you can, you know, build up um, better, you know, buildings that are worth up to 20. So these are entry level buildings. We probably won't see those three points. <laughs> um, after building with a metal, gain a victory point. All right. So we have opened our crate. That was our main objective for this game. And now you see we have 12 points where they all have 8 and 9. We have much more efficient than they were. Um, I'm guessing we're going to have to recall here again because no one wants to go get a card for some reason. Usually they like to go get cards, but there are a lot of coins. 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, he could have done it, but all right. We'll retrieve. That's okay. We still have most victory points. Oh, Red finally built his building. So he's going to trade brick for coins. Um... There's not a lot of else to do in the first game. Uh, I mean, well, I guess we got those buildings, so we could try to build one. So let's go look at what their costs are. Um, I like to use my reputation other places, either to claim objectives or to get reputation. So I usually don't go for this ref uh, this type of building first. I'd rather have this one where I can get a metal and then spend a metal for coins. That sounds like a good idea. So we need metal, metal, coal, and pumpkin to build this. So we should try and get those. Um, I need two metals, so I might as well go here, and then I can bump myself. Whenever you need two of something, yeah, it's usually a good idea. And then we'll go to those other places, and hopefully we'll get bumped. Yep, they're just trading in all their stuff for victory points. All right, so I'll bump myself. Now we've got our two metal. So we know we need a coal and a pumpkin. Oh, we should have gone and got a pumpkin. We would have got bumped. <laughs> they're bumping each other maybe they'll bump me come on come on nope no one wanted the metal all right so he's got this one trade in a wheat for a coin and a reputation and i believe that was um one of these so we've got one reputation here so if we got two more we could claim that one which i probably will try to do uh no one bumped us there uh let's look and see who needs resources the most i don't think black does Purple's more likely to, so I'm going to bump her and see if she returns the favor. Or somebody needs to go get a pumpkin. Come on, go get a pumpkin. Yes. <laughs> you can tell by the animation where they're putting their guy. So thank you, Purple, for bumping us. And they all had to pull back. That's really good. Uh, so then we'll go ahead and go get our coal. And hopefully someone goes there. Or comes to get a metal. Come on, you need a metal. I got metal here. Come get it. A green built hills building. These are almost identical, just needs a different raw resource. You bumped. Ugh, come on, bump me. That's what our third pullback. Red's got a nice little engine here. He's just got one guy getting brick, one guy spending the brick. But it's much better to like build up like four and then spend it all at once rather than go one to one because then you're pulling back every every three turns. Okay, so that's uh, his, his mine is very similar to ours. Um, we've got our two guys. I believe we have what we need now to build that building. Yes, we can build the iron market. So we'll go to the Zep and we'll build the iron market. And let's put it right here. So now we can get coins whenever we want, right? They're freely available. We could have waited until two other people built and then we've got the reputation again, but... Oh well. I want to start getting coins here. Um, all right. What else do we need to do? We need to get reputation, and we can do that by going here or here. Which one? Who's going to bump more? Yellow's got two of his resource. Green got two, so they're both not likely to do it. Um, maybe black's more likely, but all I could get there is coins. So let's risk it. Let's risk it. Coming to my building when I'm not there. I see how it is. And yellow one got brick. Why did you go get brick? Come on, get get your stuff. Wow, we are we are just not guessing correctly <laughs> on what the, where they're going. You can see Red's caught up to us now. Actually, he's past us. It's okay. We don't need to win every game.
we are getting 10 victory points here, so red's not. You have to have at least one on here to be eligible for the first, second, or third. All right, um, so we want to get two reputation to get on that objective, so we need another wheat here. If we don't get bumped, maybe we'll bump ourselves. Yellow seems to like being hanging out in the bricks there. Wow, green's already got his third building out. Pretty good. That was one thing that we, that at, in the early development of this, people asked for was like statistics. Like, how many times did I pull back my workers? That would be really cool to see, like how efficient you were with your stuff. All right, nobody bumped me here. Who has wheat? Nobody, so nobody's gonna be going there either. Maybe Bruce, but let's bump ourselves. And just bide our time. Come on, yellow. You know you want it. Green, you want a wheat? You want a wheat green? Oh, yellow did. <laughs> Thank you. So now that we have our wheat, we can come on out here, get a reputation. I would certainly like the reputation. I seem it seems on a six player game, if you get four, sometimes five, you're guaranteed first place. The AI doesn't like to go a ton of reputation they maybe get three max so i usually try and get four and then i only go back if they get close <laughs> but now having this, this three to one to one lead i can if someone gets two then i can just go to four it's you know you always have that one step above them and i never have to worry so now he wants a card you can see the cards are running out there's only four cards left Wow, he got the reputation but did not take it. Interesting. <laughs> I guess he values his his influence. We're, we're down to three. One thing about influence is when you run out, every turn, at the beginning of your turn, you advance the progress token. So once somebody runs out of influence, the game goes really fast. Um, meaning that if you play in a group that doesn't like to use influence for things, they just like happy to go here and then here and here and here. This game can last three hours. <laughs> so if, if you buy Charterstone and, or you're playing digital with a group and it just seems to take too long, spend your influence. Tell people to spend your influence. It's designed to, you know, speed up the game. That's its point. It's a limited resource. And I always read the forums. I'm like, people, this game takes two and a half hours. I'm like, Go spend your influence. You can get it done in 30 minutes if you just go, like, spend all 12 of it real quick. That might not be the wisest thing. You want to at least unlock stuff, have fun, but, yep, you can. All right, so we, we still have one more wheat. I don't really care to go get another influence. Um, we do have coins, so we could go get another card. What's available in the cards here? Uh, the, oh, we should have got this earlier. Look, this is whenever you get rep, you get an extra victory point. Um, this is whenever you grandstand, you get an extra uh, rep. So you could actually combine these two so that whenever I grandstand, I get a rep, get a rep, get a victory point. Um, this treasure allows you to get influence back. That's kind of cool. Um, I think I'm going to get this Longshoreman just for next game because I like to go for rep and having that free victory points every time I do. I mean, that's like four or five victory points a game. Is that worth it? I don't know. The other thing we do, we could go build this other building, or we have one thing, of usually a building, if it has this symbol in here, once you build the building, you get another crate. Um, like the crate came with the building or something. In the board game, it's represented by you peel a sticker off the thing, and then it has a crate number on it. Um, so we could unlock our crate. That would be really fast. <laughs> um, so that's, that's a choice. We can go for four coins. We only need one more coin there. Um, and we can get coins here. So maybe we'll bump black to get our own metal. And then we'll go spend our metal if someone bumps us. Oh, we should have gone there. We got bumped. And nobody bumped us. Wonderful. All right, he's building his second building. Nobody's opened a second crate, though. We'll be the first to do that. Um, it would be probably the last thing we'll be able to do because it'll be two of our three influence. Uh, but you can see this game quickly, especially when you're playing with six players, gets a, a little bit overwhelming the number of 
spots you can place your workers. They just, they're everywhere. <laughs> you know, went from one building in each charter to now two, sometimes three in 20 minutes. You don't get a lot of turn to, time to learn it, is what I'm, I guess I'm saying. Um, yeah, let's just go get our coins. Stop trying to guess what the NPCs are going to do because they're obviously not going where to, what I would think they would do. Bump me. Come on, Grandma Jean wants to be bumped here. All right, so should we go get this? We got seven victory points. Again, we, we got that card to give us two. If we go to the Charger Stone twice, that's, that's four points from that one card. Pretty nice. So let's do it. And we'll open crate number 40. Come on, open it. Oh. There's the two extra victory points, and we are getting some cards out of this one. Oh, so we're unlocking minions. Wow, that was that was fast unlock minions first game. I'm happy about that. Minions are an extra worker that you can only place in your charter. However, when you place them, they have an additional bonus. For instance, we have the robot minion is like our charter's minion, but anybody could buy a robot later. Um, but when we place a robot, we get a free card. Now, this is the strategy to win this game. You get a ton of robots, and you would just get cards because cards are very valuable. They're expensive, but if you have robots, they're free. So, yeah, we're going to get a lot of robots. You can you can count on that. So here's what we get a robots. We have to build the smithy. And two coins will get his victory point and another robot. There's six total robots in the game. Once people have them, there's no more. So we need to get these as soon as we you know. As soon as we're ready to build this, we need to just have coins built up and just like get four of them. Now the the one thing about that though is there's this thing called capacity. At the end of the game, at the end of game one, you can keep everything you have. End of every other game, you can only keep one. So if we have four robots, we can only keep one robot. Uh, so, yeah, it prevents you from hoarding them, but eh, it's still good. All right, so we have a persona that says um, if we ever pull back two robots at the same time, we get two victory points. That sometimes happens. Uh, it's just not very useful. And then a new objective that might show up in a future game to having three different minions. Cool. So let's go see how this robot works. Cool thing is, I'm the only one that has minions. Everybody else still has their two workers. I got a third. Uh, so they there's three people now tied for second. I don't like when they're tied because they all get the points. But you can see, I don't have any workers, but I do have this robot worker. Now, the thing, and another thing about a minion is it can only be placed on your own charter in a building that has no other workers. So I cannot place him here. I can't place him here. And watch, he's gonna give me the metal just like a normal worker, but I also get a card. Uh, and let's go ahead and claim that uh, the treasure. That sounds pretty good because I always spend influence. Now I can get it back. And you can see when everybody else goes to treasury, they just get a coin. But when it's my turn, it like the icons show better like what you're getting. I did the same thing with the charter stone where it got seven, but now it shows it reflects. I don't have to go look at my cards and say, oh yeah, I get a reputation it or an influence it. It tells me right there. Another part of the game. It's awesome. All right. So now we did not get bumps. Wow. They're just not bumping me. Have they bumped me a single time this game? <laughs> I don't know. But we are in the lead. We got 24 plus, you know, plus 10 is 34 points. Closest competition is uh, 28 or 31, I guess. No, he doesn't have that any. Uh, 29, I guess, for purple. Nope. Yeah, 28 is the highest. And we're at 34. Um, so should we go get another card, like, while we're at it? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's send him here this time, though. Um, the other thing cool about a minion is if I have a minion down on a building and another player puts their worker on that same thing it does not bump the minion instead i get that minion's ability again so if i have robots i place them all down all over my charter if anyone comes to my charter i'm getting more cards too so it just compounds it's great um i'm probably more likely to do this one to grandstand so we'll take that card there's only one card left <laughs> it's common in a six player game to to run out of cards game one or game two after that there's there's always tons of cards as long as people are open crates. Um, all right, let's see what we need to do. I think we can get an objective here. We do have the three of rotation objective, so let's go ahead and do that. 
you can see we could get up to two reputation, one because we're in advance to progress track, and the other because it's just normal to get it. Or no, because we have the card that gives us that. Um, it's our last influence though, so if we do this, we are gonna be ending the game pretty soon. Uh, I wonder if we should go spend our uh, wheat to get an influence back. Um, he's up to two, so I am gonna do this. Go ahead and get that influence back. And you can skip getting influence. Maybe you want to end the game early, so you don't want the influence, but I chose to get it. You can see they're running out of influence here. Um, but I don't want Green to come up and tie me, and his building does <laughs> gives him that. So, okay, Yellow got it. That's not a big deal. Because that just puts them in a tie for third, him in a tie for second. So we're going to go here to the grandstand. We'll claim three reputation, and we move that along, nothing happened, uh, but we get to increase. Because we ha got that influence back, we can spend it here. If we didn't get it back, we would have had zero and wouldn't be able to do this. So now I'm guaranteeing myself first place, right? Because nobody else really has enough influence to overtake me. And I'm good with that. Now the game start moving. So we have six, um, six progress left. And every time I go, it's going to move one. So maximum six turns. If anyone does the three middle buildings, it'll go even faster. Oh, red's also lost one. So we're both going to move it. So maximum three turns now. Uh, and I have to use waste one of those retrieving. That really sucks. <laughs> All right, so we're down to four. Oh, green's going to move it as well. <laughs> wow. Now we're down to three. And remember how I said we're the last player. So if somebody gets to that end thing, we still get an extra turn. So that's always nice. Uh, black got a tie for second. That's okay. So we're going to get two more turns. This one, and we guaranteed ourselves the last one because we're the last player. So with those two more turns, um, I think we should go get a... I mean, what do we got? We'll get a card, the last card there. Um, we could... We don't have any resources. Yeah, let's just get a, get one of our base resources and a card. Come on, put them out there. And we take the Archivist. So now we can use the market. We also get a reputation. We're set for next game, that's for sure. All right, and we are at 29 points. I should have looked at that because every multiple of 10, you get a star for the campaign at the end of the campaign. So we should have gone for something that would have given us a victory point to put us over at 30 because I don't see a way that we can go now go get a victory point on this last turn. Um because we don't have anything to grandstand, right? Oh, uh, what if we went here? Oh, yeah, we could go up here. Uh, let's look at the quota track. We could do our three coins for three points. We could turn in a card for four, two cards for four. Turn in a meeple. Oh, so you see this, This once meeples were unlocked, now you can trade in meeples. Um, but I think that one card for three points is looking appealing right now. So let's do that. Oh, I don't have any influence. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, we did screw ourselves. We we can't get that uh, last victor point. I'm not seeing any way that we can. If we had a brick or if we had a pumpkin, we should have got a brick or pumpkin. Darn it. Okay, well, what's going to be useful more next game? We've got four coins. We're able to open a crate. Um... And we probably want to build that, that robot building next time. So we're going to need more metal, uh, more wood, and more ore. I think let's just go get one of the ones outside of our building. Because we can always use our robot to get it. And that's the game. That's the end of the first game. 34 minutes. Pretty good, good timing here. Let's see the end game scores. Who won this time? I'm pretty sure it's us. Yes, Grammagene! 
Uh, 39 points. Second place was Black, Christil, 34, and Sebastian got... Tw oh, we got a tie for second, third place here. Uh, and you can see since... Oh, yeah, we were one shy of 40. If we would have 40, we would have got four stars. Um, but everyone else, you know, two, 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 and three. Three. Christelle was the only one that was close. Poor Sebastian and Maritza also had the same boat as us, where they were one point short of getting that next star. Uh, we can go see the breakdown, though. We got 29 for our points, 10 for our rep. Red, if you would have just put one rep out there, you would have, you know, gone over the top. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so that's the end game. We get a trophy uh, for winning. That trophy is worth victory points at the end of the campaign as well. Um, but these stars now... Here's where they're useful. They're called glory, and we can unlock things. Um, if we fill up an entire group at the beginning of a game, we get that. Um, so there's start with an extra coin, start with an extra resource, start with three victory points. Uh, we don't have peril yet in the game, so ignore that. Um, start with a free reputation. Uh, start with a free meeple. Start the free card or pick an extra persona. That can be pretty powerful at the end of the game, or you know, pretty soon. But this one by far is the most powerful. This is a capacity, and that is how what determines how many things you can keep from round to round. We want to unlock this as quick as possible so that we can unlock keep more things from round to round. It'll give us a huge leg up on the competition. Uh, it's explaining that in game one, we get to keep everything, but in game two, be prepared. You only get to keep your capacity. So let's uh, let's just look. Um, actually, yes, we don't need to go to the game finish. Um, let's go back to here. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. The first edition of Charterstone Digital. We're going to play 12 of these during our quarantine uh, lockdown here. Uh, so keep an eye on my YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell. Uh, and go check out the game right now. It's on sale at Steam. I think it's like 15 bucks. I think normally it's like 20, but I think they're giving it a discount. Don't quote me on the price. So it's around that. Uh, it's also available on iOS for 10 bucks and will be out on Android for the same price very shortly. They're having an issue with getting it on the, uh, the Google Play Store. Um, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. So, Fudge X.